how to deal with an avoidant using what I call the poker player strategy. You don't have to know anything about poker. I will explain in a second the dynamic and how you can reconcile, how you can create a secure base with an avoidant. Especially if you want to get back with an avoidant, I will explain the most important critical factor to get back with an avoidant. Jingle. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance. So first of all, let me clarify, I don't play games, I'm a therapist. I help people, yes, to get back with their ex, but the point is not to manipulate or to, you know, play games when we are not 15 anymore. The idea is how can we grow as a person? How can we learn from this breakup? And my point is to help you navigate the space. And sometimes I use images, visualization to help you um, get an idea of what you need to do. Because sometimes it's easier for you to visualize that what would that person do in my situation. It's very much about distancing. Um, it's a concept that a lot of psychologists use. It's our ability to, from, um, to shift from a perspective uh, that is very much, this is my situation, this is my reality and take that step back, zooming out and distancing yourself. So the point is here to obviously share with you some practical tips. I'm very much into practicality and also help you visualize what would a poker player do <laughs> in this context. So the problem with an avoidant or the anxious avoidant dynamic, when you have a problem and you're anxious, your response will be different than if you have a problem and you're avoidant. So, I used to be avoidant, I'm avoidant. The way I deal with problems is that I would do it on my own, I would dismiss it. I wouldn't necessarily face those emotions, I wouldn't necessarily let those emotions take the lead, and I would keep it to myself. For anxious people, if I have a problem, I need to disclose it, I need to discuss, I need to vent. And so the problem is that after a breakup with an avoidant, there is this tension because you want to reconcile, you want to discuss, you want to understand. And as I discussed, they don't want it. <laughs> they just want their space. And so that pulls away the avoidant even further when you are trying to confront them. Even if, if it's just from a, a very nice uh, approach of if you want to take care of them, if you want to have news from them, not necessarily about the relationship, but they could be perceived, that could be perceived as something invading. The only way to get back with your ex, regardless of whether the person is avoidant, regardless of the person is anxious or secure, the only way to get back with your ex is to change. <laughs> Your ex will never, ever get back with you if things remain the, the same. It's very simple. People get it. You get it. It makes sense. But what are you doing about it? And that's the thing is where people like, there's always this discrepancy between like, I get it. I understand. But kind of it's hard to change, right? We are, there's a lot of friction when it comes to change. We are... It's interesting with human beings, we have the ability to change, we have the ability to understand concepts, to rationalize our decisions, etc. etc. To, in a way, uh, conceptualize that we have ability to control our actions, but it's hard. <laughs> it's hard because we kind of like the status quo. Uh, changing is going into a new territory. Uncharted territory is difficult, it's scary, it's the unknown. I want you to challenge yourself and those limited beliefs about change. My job when I work with my clients is how can I bring them from place A to place B? It's as simple as that. That's the only thing I do. And very often, it, you can't do it on your own. I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. I've tried, it's very hard. I'm not saying nobody, you know, uh, that you can't do it on your own, but it's harder. Don't get me wrong. So the thing is, after a breakup, we are submerged by emotions, right? And we have this uh, urge to reach out, which is without an age. <laughs> and a strong desire to communicate. So you want to connect, you want to explain, you want to understand and discuss. That will pull your ex back even further. The thing is, this pain, which is real, it's not about 
dismissing it, but you have to understand that it's a signal for you to address some of your insecurities. And also, in a way, that I, that's something I discuss with my clients very often. It's hard to understand, but in a way, I prefer you being triggered, having strong emotions, because that's how you can learn more effectively to be aware. If you were completely emotionally flat and nothing negative or positive would happen in your life, it would be harder for you to perceive how to change, to perceive your triggers, to perceive your limits. So in a way, when you feel low, down, that's an opportunity to explore there, to understand and tame your emotions. So the fight or flight, that's how it's called, when we are triggered, when we are under stress, there's a flight or flight, is used to be adaptive. You know, when you were facing a danger in the jungle or whatever, <laughs> facing a tiger or a, I don't know, <laughs> whatever, um, a lion, then you would fight or flight. This is the idea of how can I protect myself? And that's what happens after a breakup when we are um, submerged by strong emotions. We want to connect. We want, we are kind of triggering automatic processes. The problem is that in the context of relationship, it has become maladaptive. The idea of I need to confront, I need to discuss is not the right solution. And so that's why I want you to visualize this idea of playing poker with an avoidant. The difference between beginners and pro player is that pro players, and it's interesting because you might think poker is a game of luck, you have actually people whose job are to play poker. <laughs> so in the long run, they make money. There's an element of luck in poker. But over many tournaments, uh, many rounds of play, the sort of the, the luck is removed from the uh, uh, from the statistics. So what they do is they manage the risk. They know there's an element of luck. They know they can have um, bad uh, bad beat. Um, and so they, ha they also accept that it takes time. You start with a number of chips and the idea is gradually increasing your stack. The thing is what they do is they focus on the overall trend. They don't think like I need to 10x my chip, my pot as quickly as possible. They know the tournament will take, sometimes it takes days. And so their idea is just I just want to eliminate people from my table ensure that, I'm, that I know that I assess the other people at the table and that I grow steadily managing my risk. So anytime I make a bet, I know that my risk of, that my return will be higher than the risk of losing. And also what they do obviously is that they hide their real hand, right? They don't go all in on their first hand. They don't go all in right away. They assess, they spend their time to understand people around them, right? So it's very important to understand that the recovery process, when you're anxious, when you want to get those answers, is you going all in every single hand. What will happen is if you do that, is that the person you basically lose because you will put a lot of pressure, you will not manage the risk, and you will be disappointed. So, as I said, it's not a game of luck. The thing is, you can't, there are some cars that you can't control. So it's the element of uh, embracing the stoicism philosophy that I uh, talk about in my videos. And this is why you need to be cautious with your strategy. This is why you have to go one step at a time. I spend most of my time with my client telling them, let's slow down, let's reassess, and let's move one step at a time. If you want to have a call with me, for example, there's a link in the description. 80% of the time people ask me, what should I do? when this happens. And very often, I'm, what I answer is like, in your situation right now, at this stage, I would do this. But then after, I don't know, and you shouldn't know, because there's no point trying to anticipate the next three, four, fifth next move. The whole point is, every single time, it's kind of a new hand, it's a new, um, it's a new game in a way. You start from scratch, and you see whether the trend, whether there's progression, whether you are able to build intimacy with your partner, whether he or she opens up, whether the communication improves, etc., etc. 
So it's about progression and it's about consistency. So there's two elements and that's why I wanted to uh, use this poker <laughs> player. Is accept that there's an element of uncertainty. In poker it's luck, in relationships there's an element of uncertainty. I can spend years talking to your uh, ex, to your partner, there'll still be part of them that I don't understand. And you have to accept that. They have their own ways of reasoning, they have their own ways of thinking, they have their own belief system. We can spend hours trying to decode those things in a way that doesn't necessarily help you to get back together. What helps you to get back together is showing up but with the right attitude, is assessing without forcing your partner. And by doing that, over time, if you are meant to be together, if you convey change, because again, remember, we need to change, you will get back together. You will create the condition for your ex to feel like, huh, maybe there's another an alternative to this relationship. Um, so you and your ex are on different timelines. For your ex, they took the decision a while ago, you want answers, you want to get back together right away. So it's important to understand that you shouldn't rush things and in a way, the slower, the better. As long as it's an upward trend, it doesn't really matter if it takes a month, six months, a year. In a way, if you've been together for 10 years and you have one, you are one year apart and you get back together at the end, it doesn't really matter. Maybe you needed a space and I have, not a lot of cases, but I had few cases of people where I helped them and it took nearly a year to get back together. But they reported that actually that was really helpful because they were able to really build stronger foundation for that new chapter in their life. Because it's a new chapter, it's a new relationship. Um, so again, don't focus on the few setbacks. Don't focus on the fact that at the beginning, yes, it's a bit of a mixed signal, it's a bit of a hot and cold dynamic. Look at the overall trend. If you have any question, if you have uh, need anything, don't hesitate to comment. There's also a quiz I forgot to mention to know if you have any chance of getting back with your ex in the description is totally free. I will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>